Hello, how's everyone doing today? I'm here once again with the uh, very lovely Kelly Diamond. It's been a while. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Anytime. Yeah, it's been like, well, half a year, I think, or so much since you left home. Um, yeah. But, yeah. So I, I guess, um, unless you have any particular topics you want to talk about, I guess the, the first topic is, I, it's a bit old hat, but uh, I guess we'll discuss it anyway. Uh, is you know um, this whole uh, brutalism versus uh, humanism debate? You know, should we be uh, bores or or is, is libertarianism about more than the non-aggression principle? It's anti, you know, bigotry, uh, all that stuff. What are, you, what are your thoughts on that? I think that anybody who goes out of their way to even so much as I mean, if they go out of their way to just I guess upset somebody for the sake of upsetting them. Like, for example, if I know that it drives my sister crazy to <laughs> to bite my nails, and I do it anyway, knowing full well that it drives her nuts. I mean, it, to me, it's just if nothing else, it's just a lack of consideration. Okay, right. and, but I'm not. I, and I'm, I don't condemn it. I don't say you know, oh, you, people, you know, we shouldn't. You know, I don't. I don't start my sentences that way, and I try not to anyway. And you know, but. But at the same time, I think there is a certain amount of decency and, commun and, and consideration that I think most people have. I don't, I don't think they need a law for that, and I don't think they need – I don't even know if it's necessarily a moral compass. I just think that, you know, most people really are adverse to getting into, you know, getting into conflict, conflict and getting into, you know, adversarial discussions or altercations with people for the sake of it. They've got better things to do with their time, really. I mean, that's kind of how I feel about it. So I mean, to that extent, I think that I think brutalism is tempered by that pragmatism, and then you have the humanism, where I would say, okay, look, while I appreciate that you have your boundaries and I have mine, and you know, and I you have your threshold for shit and I have mine, I can't live my life according to your threshold of shit, but I can live according to my threshold of shit, and I can assume that you know people would at least you know would would be would have a threshold. And if I at least tamp it back to my at least my, where I where I feel it's tolerable, they wouldn't be exposed to the full brunt of you know of you know what I could be if I just had no filter at all. Do I have a filter? And probably less than most people. You know, I I, I would say that I'm a, I'm a pretty black and white, very cut and dry person. I have very little regard for people's emotions and feelings, mainly because they're not mine to worry about. You know. <laughs> So, I mean, well, they're not. I've got my own feelings to worry about. You know, I mean, you want to go cry in a corner, I'll let you go and do that. Go get your towel. And then when you're done, we'll talk, you know. But I can't, you know, I mean, I've had that conversation with people, and, you know, with pe close people. And I've, and, you know, and they said, how can you be that way? That's not fair. That's not, not, and it's like, but why do I care about your sensibilities? As a, when I, when weighted against, when weighted against, you know, fact or truth, or what's what I believe to be and feel convicted to be morally right, you know, why would I censor myself to make sure that what I say is palatable to you? In fact, if I if I if I make it too palatable, it won't be nearly as indelible as if I make it really offensive. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's necessary. You know, and I don't even know if I go out of my way to be offensive as much as I do just don't go out of my way to be sensitive. You know? Right. So I, I think there's a balance, and I think most I, I, will, I will say this that for as much as I see about all the shit that gets posted on libertarian brutalism, at the end of the day, I think those people are perfectly civilized. They're not sitting there, you know, basically hoarding over this over a dead animal to see who can bite off the most raw meat. And I, mean, I just don't. I mean, I, I think what it is is that it's almost. Sat, I mean, I would say it's almost satire. I think know, it is like, satire. I think I that's the point. I think that's the yeah. point of it. That it's it's sort of just you know let's let's just numb people's sensitivity and stuff like that. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. and I'm for that. I'm for that. I, I think that's necessary. I think I think this type of stuff needs to be mainstreamed rather than made taboo. Just mm -hmm. like I want guns to be mainstream and I want discussions about sex to be mainstream, not because of any other reason than because when it's been marginalized and when it's been you know and when it's been treated as taboo. Bad things come from that. Things fester. 
Seriously, you have a lot of repressed emotions. I mean, I lived in Japan for a year. I will tell you that is the most sexually repressed country in the world. They're, I mean, they don't know how, they don't have an outlet. They're, they're that, they're that freaking wound up. And, uh, you know, culture prevents them from being really open and forward about things of that nature. And I feel like having open discussions about stuff like that and not being inhibited and, feel, you know, and freely discussing things that are, that might very well offend your sensibilities is, is, an, is an important exercise in society. So in that regard, I want to normalize it. I want to mainstream that. And I even want to normalize and mainstream all the cuss words so that people will stop gasping every time I open my mouth. <laughs> I mean, right. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really sensitive either. It, I mean, it certainly doesn't endear you to people. I'm, I'm certainly, I wouldn't call myself a popular guy, although right. most of the people who... I think are popular, sort of phony. Uh, I rather sort of just be real, um, and I, I sort of like. I, I sort of enjoy pissing a lot of people off, uh, as as well. Just because, because, I mean, at least for me, you know, uh, it, it depends. I think anyone who you know, I want to test if what people say about themselves are true. So if someone's going to go around saying, "Well, I'm tolerant. I'm open-minded." My view is let's test this theory. Right. Absolutely. Well, I, I mean, if there's one thing that's easy to test, it's the people who think, you know, who try to impose this sense of altruism on, you know, on others. But it's like, really? If you're really that altruistic, I think I can do a pretty quick litmus test to prove that you suck because, I mean, here you are bantering with me on Facebook when you could be giving somebody the shirt off your back. And you're not. You asshole. <laughs> you selfish, greedy bastard. Well, most of it, I think, is just more jealousy and resentment than any real type right. of compassion. Right. Or a pat on the back. You know, I mean, I don't think it's a coincidence. I mean, I mean, take actors. I mean, people in Hollywood are the most vain, narcissistic, phony, egotistical people you can meet, generally speaking. Right. Or there are exceptions. And it's no coincidence that they're left-wing because... Uh, to be a modern liberal or to be an aggressive is a very narcissistic pat on the back. And come on, most people who who have this philosophy don't really care about the poor. They don't care about the downtrodden. I can see through you. You're full of shit. Okay. <laughs> to, to to have your philosophy doesn't mean to be a progressive doesn't mean you care about the poor. It means you believe you're the only one who cares about the poor. Right. Right. Well, you know, it, it is, it's a certain amount of absolution of their guilt, you know, that they feel guilty about having. So you have your latte liberals and your limousine liberals who, you know, who will give their tap, their hat tip to the poor and in their rhetoric, you know, and they, I mean, in, in real, I mean, the real heavy rhetoric is when, when you have people like Warren Buffett saying, tax me more. Yeah, I'll tax you more. You He's running a new check. How hard is it? Yeah, well, there's, a, there's actually a place where you can donate if you want to. But you don't, you know. I mean, I had to call out somebody for that as well. It's like, you know, there's people who do well who are perfectly willing to be taxed more. Oh, why do you got to wait for somebody to come to your door? Why don't you just do it now? Don't claim anything. Just don't. I challenge you just not to claim anything. Don't claim a deduction then. If you're so freaking awesome and you think taxes are so freaking benevolent and so great, and they make you the more you pay, the more righteous you are in some sort of scientological way, then by all means, don't declare anything. Why do you declare your kids? Come on, he's full of shit. I'm sure he finds loopholes. I'm sure most of these people find oh, loopholes. Oh, they all do. It's just a show. It's in, First of all, he's saying it in public because it's not charity unless everyone knows about it. So right. It's to make a, a show. I don't know if you saw that YouTube video where a guy's in an experiment. He had a, a, a sign over his body and it said, fuck the poor. And he was oh, like, yeah, I should. Uh, you saw it? I, sh I shared it. I remember sharing that one. Oh, well, for people who don't know what it is, basically this guy had a sign on his body that said, fuck the poor. And he's like, fuck the poor. And everyone's like yelling, fuck the poor. What are you talking about? I'll beat you up. Fuck the poor. That's obnoxious. Uh, and people were really obnoxious. Root him. He's like, how can you say fuck the poor? And then later he had a sign that said, uh, help the poor. Uh, and was asking for money and no one gave him anything. Right. Basically, shit. Sh people... Right. That people are just saying, well, what about the poor? But the reality is, they want—they don't really care about the poor. They care about the reputation and wanting right. people to think that, oh, you're so sensitive. Oh, you're so nice. 
Right, right. And, and you know, and the thing is, is I'd rather, I, I think there's a lot more intellectual honesty to saying, look, I do care about poor people in the sense, that, and, and poverty as a social issue. And yeah, I do, I, I mean, just because my remedy for it is not your remedy doesn't necessarily mean that that I don't care. It just means that I care in a different way. My solution is, com is you know, conceived out of a completely different worldview. I mean, I believe that you can fix poverty by allowing people, allowing people and li liberating people to actually do for themselves. But we don't do that. We, we, we enslave people, you know, as a society, we try to enslave them into these programs, enslave them with the regulations and with the programs and the, you know, the welfare and whatnot. And what you end up with is just a bunch of, you know, domesticated dogs, right? I mean, you just, they are just sitting there whimpering in your lap and waiting for the crumbs and, and waiting for the, you know, the gray dehorse meat and their health care and their shelter mm -hmm. and everything that the master's going to give them. At the same time, I would say I do care about the poor. I don't want the poor to have to get in line for a welfare check or, or use food stamps. I want them to have some pride in what they do, feel like they've contributed, and you know, feel the exhaustion of a hard day's work, and collect the check for it, and 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 carry the hell on. You know, I mean, but I don't feel that poverty is fixed by that that by by sympathy. It's fixed by empathy. Empathy is that I understand what it is. To be downtrodden, I understand what it is to be out of work, and I wish you know, and I understand your frustration. Now, if you're so frustrated, what would you want to do? Well, if I could do it, and I could afford the, you know, if I could afford it, I would have my own taxicab business. Oh, you would. Well, you can't because of the permits and the regulations and the and you know and the certificates and the licensing and the, the, So now, ten thousand dollars later, can you can you now become a taxicab driver? Yeah, your fares are higher because you got to pay that off. You know, and keep it some sort of regulation going. All I want to do is make it easy for somebody to do for themselves. And I don't think it's that hard. It used to be that pe most people were able to do for themselves. And the few that couldn't, you help with charity. You know, and even then, I believe in mutual aid rather than just giving to this big juggernaut and this big, you know, uh, centralized, you know, arbiter of charity, if you want to call it that. You know, to mismanage your funds and lose a bunch of shit and throw it into this black hole that never helps people get back on their feet. Right. Yeah, I mean, minimum wage is so freaking great, we continue having to raise it. And these programs are so good, we more people are going on and then we're expanding them. So, right. yes, yeah, it's complete nonsense. Um, right. that's, that's why it's very sad when people are like, like when they go to, when people go to anarchists, and they expect us to have all the answers on who, who's going to do this in an anarchist society. I'm like, who's going to do it? You you want me to tell you? You want me to explain central planning under a scenario where there should be no central planning? <laughs> right. I mean, that's like prove God doesn't exist by showing me that God by showing me that God doesn't exist. What does that mean? You want me to show you God only deny he exists? I'm not even sure what this means. It's complete lunacy. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, so yeah, I I mean. You know, uh, you, yes, I can't explain who's going to do what under a free society because the only way you can explain who's going to do what under under a, a, a society is if it's a dictatorial society where you say Joe's going to do it, or if not, I'll break his ass. Right, right. Well, I mean, there's also, I mean, but there's also the, you know, a, a more pra an even more practical thing is, is that okay if 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 the government d disappeared tomorrow, who would do it? The same. Well, it's doing it now. It's not like he forgets how to build a road or lay <laughs> pavement. I mean, it's not like when the state leaves, so does all the knowledge that came from the monopoly. You know, I mean, Jesus. I mean, he's still going to be able to lay concrete, know how to fucking cure it, and let it be. So, I mean, the same people who are doing whatever they're doing now for the state would conceivably be doing a similar job without one. You just have a different means of paying for it. I mean, capitalism capitalism is simply the private means of production and ownership and distribution. So that so what does that mean? That means that you take the public out of it, you take the government out of it, and you replace it with a private entity. That's all it is. If this is not a big deal. This is not a huge... I mean, certainly isn't the big transition that the RBE people expect us to endure, you know, waiting for the fucking machines to come... <laughs> And produce everything for us, but I mean, it's all it is is that you know. Okay, instead of me paying the government, I'm going to pay a private owner a toll. 
or I'm not going to pay a toll at all. Maybe the businesses will all cooperatively, you know, put in for roads so their customers can get there and their and their freight can go back and forth. Maybe because that's how it used to be. That, or you know, at least now, perhaps you could even have advertiser-funded roads. You know, where it's just billboards and or you know, advertisers who you know, much like how you have Adopt a Highway now, you have advertisers who buy a chunk of road and then it's sponsored by them. You don't pay a damn thing. They pay to get your eyeballs. I don't know. I mean, any number of things are possible under in a in a private situation, all of which could be you know are are, are based on your on your consumption of it rather than the presumption that you will use it. Right. You know. So there's a difference, and and it might be more expensive. I don't know, yeah. but I I can't see it being that way simply because there wouldn't be you know I the mean, distor I economic mean, distortion. And a lot of people are you know it's weird how irrational people are because people are like well you know we need these things and I'm like. But but we wouldn't pay for them if we don't have to. Right. So they would only you value you you value the. How does this make sense? So you don't think taxation is theft because government provides services you need. But if government provides a, wouldn't provide them, you wouldn't pay for them. Well, then you don't really value them, and then it is theft. Or how how important are they that you're not going to pay for them? I mean, it's it's no one's going to pay for a road. Or, or if if government didn't exist, people, everyone would just sit in their houses all day and never visit anyone. I mean, this is <laughs> frankly retarded. Yeah, I mean, even deer are capable of creating a path. For God's sakes, they don't even have four heads. <laughs> they managed to figure that shit out. Did you see that picture? Actually, it was a picture in the woods, a Facebook meme, and it, it was a deer path, and it said proof that deer have formed a government. <laughs> right, right, exactly. I think I saw that, but it's true. I mean, it, you know, I, I don't. I think it's this apocalyptic, you know, hy you know, hyperbole that that people, you know, bring to the bring to the forefront is is always the argument against anarchy, right? It's always the it's always the argument. I mean, without without government, then all of a sudden, you know, I mean, shit just goes crazy. I mean, people are, are shooting people at each other for no reason. They're um, eating, there's rape. You know. There's rape. I mean, all of a sudden people are raping each other. I'm like, what the hell? I mean, I don't understand. I don't understand. I mean, really, the, you really believe, you really believe that the presence of government, the mere existence of one somewhere, and that there be an agent somewhere, prevents criminal activity? When in fact, they are the greatest purve purveyors of crime in our society, right? They're the greatest polluters. They're the greatest uh, thieves. They're the greatest killers. They're the greatest rapists. They're the greatest extortionists. All of that is happening with a government, but you think that it could get worse without one. I can't imagine it. I can't imagine it without centralized power how that's even possible, how a private entity or a private individual could ever perpetrate such a thing. Right, it's it's completely irrational. Every argument. <laughs> well, that I think is just proof that that statism is intellectually and morally bankrupt because no one has ever made a moral and intellectually argument in favor of it. It's all boo boo bad things are gonna happen. <laughs> that's what we call a demagogue. A demagogue right. is someone who says, "Follow me, or bad things will happen." But that's, that's but how not an argument. But how sad is that? How sad is that? Because as a from a marketing perspective, who the hell gets on television or creates an ad that says, "At least I'm not this," and sells themselves on that on that value proposition? I could be worse. Buy my shit. Who the fuck does that? <laughs> Nobody buys a product. But that's never been that's never been a successful marketing yeah. Yeah. tagline or or strategy ever. It's always been, tell me the benefits, right? Tell me the good things about your product or your service. Okay, so sell me on your fucking statism. Nobody sold me on it. Because everybody knows deep down it's this lesser evil thing. It's a necessary evil. That's, that's how everybody sells it. Because, they're try because they realize they can't de it's indefensible. Right. It's indefensible. The only thing they can do is say, well, it is also my security blanket at night that I suck my thumb to in a fetal position so that the boogie monster doesn't, you know, anarchy doesn't come and swallow me and my kids. I pay homage to it, and I sacrifice a virgin, and everything will be okay. I mean, seriously, <laughs> they start to sound almost tribally freaking superstitious about it. <laughs> you know, and I, and I, and I hate, and I, it does sound trite to equate the government to religion, but in many ways, I mean, 
there is, I mean, I'm starting, to, I'm starting to wonder if there's any discernible difference, you know. Well, re uh, religion's not as stupid. And I'm an atheist, <laughs> but religion is not as stupid right. as government. Government is way more irrational, uh, <laughs> in, in my view, because it's, it's human worship. At least, you know, a religion is, uh, you know, some entity higher than yourself and that you can worship. And I guess you can't explain it because it's, 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 you know, it's it's not human like, but human worship. I mean, I can't think of anything even more silly. Um, right. But yeah, I mean, you know, this this is an argument. I mean, a lot of times I'll bicker and complain, and I'll hear arguments. You know, people will say to me, "Well, you know, uh, you know, you're a spoiled brat. You know, in other countries, you know, you couldn't even uh, criticize the government. You know, you should be lucky that you live here and not in you know one of these you know like South Korea, right? North Korea. Sorry. And and so my response is okay. I'll punch you in the eye. I'll punch you in the eye, and you should say thank you. A lot of people would kill me. Thank you for only punching me in the eye. <laughs> Again, but this is that—that's the marketing. That's the marketing of, of statism, right? At least you're not North Korea. At least you're not North Korea. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the selling point of the United States. At least you're not I mean, North Korea. That's what you've got. It's fucking sad. That, that I, I'm going to make a burger joint, and my slogan is going to be. Hey, we're not. At least we're better than McDonald's. <laughs> at least I use mostly cows. <laughs> like, <laughs> how the hell do you sound like that? I mean, but, oh, but, but you have to have a monopoly. You need a monopoly. Kelly, to I, this, like Kelly that. this this is this should be your show. You should make commercials in the <laughs> style of arguments people give for the state. I think that would that's that's <laughs> a good idea right there. That's that's, that's marketing a good idea at least. Yeah. Status marketing. I don't even have to try. You have to use my shit. <laughs> right. Right. Great tagline. Things so valuable, you have to be forced to pay for them. <laughs> um, Things so awesome, I have to hold you at gunpoint to do it. Yeah, but I mean, well, you know, you look. Can... I mean, look. You can have these ridiculous arguments. Look, we have to force people to get who to, who to marry because if. If if we allow people to pick who they marry, then there'll be all this jealousy, and people are going to start stabbing other people. I want that woman. That's not fair. And people are going to be too picky, and people will die alone. So we have to arrange marriage. Otherwise, you know, the the, the planet won't perpetuate well itself because there'll be civil war because of all the fighting on choosing a mate. Well, that and everybody will turn gay. <laughs> but I mean. That also also an inevitability if you take away state sanctioned marriage license. I mean well, clearly. I mean, that's government science right there. That's some common core shit. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, you know, but but that's it, to me, you know, the that's the that's the I think it goes I think you could throw it back, you know. I think that's where the brutalism comes in and it says, you know what, if you're willing to throw this kind of hyperbolic bullshit at me then I have absolutely no problem throwing it right back and giving you a hearty dose of brutal honesty when it comes to you know a free society and how it should operate. I mean, I you I mean the thing is is you know you feel you know if, the, if these statists are making these arguments saying you know this is this is how you know this is how it should be and without the state you're fucked then okay then let me tell you how many different ways to Sunday you're fucked with the state and if I were to just remove the state. All of that, at least that, would go away. So all you would have left is private sector crime. I would take that. I would take that. I would take whatever's left in the private sector and the criminal element thereof over having the private sector criminal compounded with government criminality. You know, I, I mean, I don't. I, I would, that's less. It's less violence. That's already less. <laughs> the math is very simple. So, and you know, I mean. People don't. People don't. You know, I had somebody tell me that. You know, tell me that I shouldn't be able to defend myself with a gun. And I said, this coming. From, I mean, this coming from somebody who's like what, six feet tall and two hundred pounds. Oh, is it to make it easier for you to rape me and mug me? I mean, seriously, you don't need it, but I do. I'm five foot four and a buck ten. I mean, <laughs> I need an equalizer. I need something that's going to get me the hell away. And to tell me that I'm not entitled to protect myself that way. And so they said, well, you don't need an AR-15 to do that. I said, well, I'll tell you what. If I was just wearing an unloaded AR-15, that alone would deter people from perpetrating a crime against me. I wouldn't need to use it. I wouldn't even need to use it. I'd just 
have it, and that would be enough. You know, I mean, still, you know, but there's people who think that they can tell you how to protect yourself, you know, and then it's like, and then they say later, well, then how are you going to protect yourself in a stateless society? Well, I'd go back to my gun, right? I mean, the, the very means that you took away from me, that's where I'd go. The same thing with the poor. What would you do about the poor without the government? Well, then the poor would just go back to doing for themselves. It, it, we would just revert back to our natural tendencies, and that is to do for ourselves. Right. Yeah, it's it's very it's very I don't and and you know I don't understand why they if why I don't really get the logic of you know how do you decide what the government should do and what it should do like what no one's afraid that that there's not going to be food without government so why are they afraid there's not going to be roads without government. Well, I mean, to some extent, I think people are afraid there isn't going to be any food. I mean, they, I think if you talk to some no, of them... they're going to get salmonella poisoning if there's no FDA. Right, <laughs> right. They're going to be afraid of the salmonella poisoning. They're going to be afraid that, you know, that farmers won't be able to support themselves without subsidies. They're going to be afraid that all the corporations are going to corrupt our food and all the corporations are just going to pave over all the farmland. I mean, it, I don't right, know. Right, because government and corporations are, are enemies, not partners. Right, right. Well, you know, and that's and to me, it's like, well, if I don't understand how how a corporation even exists in a stateless society, I mean, riddle me that. Riddle me how you can have a corporation without government to recognize its identity and sanctify it. You know, you can't. I mean, you can't any more than you can have. I mean, what you have. I mean, what does marriage become other than just a promise between two people or more? You know. It's just a pro I mean, marriage gets reduced to nothing more than a promise, you know, or, or some sort of vow or something to that effect. But it's but it's no longer this whole institution that was created by a government. You know, the same is true. I mean, most most institutions would disappear simply because government currently is the only one propping it up and defining it. So. Right. Yeah. I mean, I I don't know. Um. What 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 do you say to people who say, well, if if um, if anarchy is so good, then, then how come we don't see anarchist societies? How come mo how come you're in such a fringe movement? How come most people are not embracing your philosophy? It's the most it's the most ethical and rational. Because ethics and because ethics won't tr and rational don't trump fear on a lot of people. There's too many people who are way too afraid to let go of the state. I mean, honestly, they are afraid of what would happen, which is why they come up with those apocalyptic, you know, dystopia type, you know, scenarios about what happens when the state collapses is because they're afraid that this is what will happen, you know, and then what will become of everybody, et cetera, et cetera. I, you, I mean, play it out to people and, you know, and say, you know, and, and the thing is, the, the thing is, is that they really are afraid of what they don't know. And the sad part is, is they don't have the cognitive ability to consider what an, what a private alternative would look like. You know, that, 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 they, that they're so worried. That's why they sit there and inundate you and I with questions about, well, what about this? What about that? Who will do this? Who will do that? I need to make sure that everything is lined up and taken care of before I could ever let go of this security blanket. The thing right, is, unless you have the answer out. how to solve every freaking problem I can come up with, your system right. sucks. Exactly, exactly. And so, well, you know, you have that. Why, why doesn't the state have to have the same, uh, uh, the, uh, the same requirement, right? It doesn't. I mean, yeah, it absolutely doesn't. Well, why is the government like this god that knows all answers and and with and without without you know government the whole world falls apart. It's just human beings, for God's sake. Well, you know, then then there's the you know there's these people who you know, who will say, well, if you don't have a military, who will protect your borders? You know, you have the people who will say, well, without the without the police, you know, or or the courts, without the, at least the courts, you would have no means of arbitrating, you know, your differences and and resolving your differences. And it's like, but you don't need a court. You don't need centralized power. You don't need compulsion. You don't need half that stuff. That's all unnecessary. Yeah, I, I, I'm, it's like, are you really that afraid to, to for, uh, of direct action? I mean, you must be. Courts. I'm not against courts. Um, I'm against courts in the sense that I don't want them to be picked for me. I mean, right I, now, I have, against, I, I have a judge that gets picked. I don't get I'm to pick my own. I'm courts, but I'm not against private courts. Right? Saying I'm against government doing something. Look, if government monopolized food, I'm not anti-food. I'm right. anti-government control of food. Right, right, exactly. So there, there is a, there, there is a huge difference between you know the purveyor 
right? The person who's going, where, what is the source? Is the source, you know, communal and social and done through compulsion or is it private and done voluntarily? And, you know, I can, you know, while we can argue that it's a rational thing, I think the biggest problem that people have is trusting that other people will go along. You know, well, I'm, I don't need a, a law against murder for me. I would never murder anybody. It's for everybody else that would murder. But, but if you're going to murder, you're going to murder, and it doesn't matter if the law is there or not. You're going to go kill somebody. So, well, it's not meant to prevent people from murdering. It's meant to be a remedy after the fact. But it's like a remedy after the fact? What are you going to do to remedy a murder? Right. I, I, what are you going to do? You're not going to remedy a murder. You're going to just, you're, you're, the worst you can ever do to a person is kill them back, you know, and, but that doesn't answer anything. That doesn't address any social ills. It doesn't do, but more importantly, I think the government has become that third party that absolves you from all guilt. So if you want, if you want, you know, there to be uh, charity, then I'm not going to steal from you to give to a charity, but I'll have this third party here do it for me. If if somebody's going to invade your your country, well, I'm not going to do anything about it. But I'll have these guys pay for it and take care of it and buy all the arms and do it, and I can just sit back and support the troops with my yellow freaking ribbons, you know. And you know, it's it's that it's a third party, you know, absolution almost, where it's like, okay, well, as long as I don't have to do it and I can get somebody else to do it, then it's fine, you know. I mean, it, but the thing is, is you brought up a great point, and that is. They would never do it themselves. Not only would they never pay for half the shit that they that they that the government does and, and, and gives them, but they wouldn't do the things either. They wouldn't do it. They wouldn't do half the things that the government does on their behalf because it would take an obscene amount of courage and irreverence towards life <laughs> to do it. And they can't and they can't bring themselves to be that immoral. You know, it does. It's a threat to their morality to behave the way the state does. So they have the state do it, and it's not like it's like hiring a hitman. I didn't kill anybody. I just hired somebody else to take care of things. You know, it's that. I mean, I really do feel like the government has become that for people, so that they can exact what they want on others. I mean, if you see how pe how litigious people operate, that's exactly what they do. I would never have the guts to come after you at gunpoint and ask you for money and demand money from you and reparations from you, but I do have the guts to hire a lawyer who will then plead his case to a judge who will then order you to pay money. That I have the guts to do. Well, isn't that fucking courageous? <laughs> you know, so I don't know. In that regard, I don't like the idea of the manipulation being used with the government for, of people trying to get what they want out of it, you know. I think that, you know, when you start hearing conversations among statists and they're like, well, this is how you can work the system in your favor. I mean, that, that's telling, isn't it? I mean, that's kind of telling about what, how, what the system is, if you can work it in your favor. Right. Yeah. And, of course, no one minds using the government for them, but then they get upset when the shoe's on the other foot. Right, exactly. Right? They have no problem using the government for their own needs. When, when someone else acts, that, I, have, I have, look, I have very little sympathy for a lot of these some are just deluded and they don't know and and they don't know what they do and they don't really think about these issues. And for those people, yeah, you know, I feel bad for them. But for a lot of people who uh, are not stupid and just seem not to give a shit, I hope they reap what they sow. I hope that people who advocate uh, disarming other people and making them vulnerable become victims. I hope they get shot next. Uh, I don't want anyone to get shot, but if someone's going to get shot, I hope it's them. Uh, so I, I don't um, I don't really particularly care that statists are victims of government oppression when they uh, support it themselves. My heart bleeds mainly for people who want to be free and for people who just don't know any better and aren't thinking through these issues. But people who are aware like I was talking to someone earlier last week who said to me, "I think the government, I think that I think the government should redistribute wealth." And I said, "You think it's okay to redistribute wealth?" And he said, "As long as it's the government doing it." That is the kind of person I don't have sympathy for. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. That. Well, that's. I mean, that person. I mean, that person is, is. You know, is tacitly admitting that they're chicken shit. 
Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't have the guts to hold you up at gunpoint. I don't have the guts to wrap you myself, but I'm going to hide like a sniveling coward behind a balladur. Because right. I'm a coward. I don't have any balls, and I'm just a little scared. Fine. Well, I hope the government steals from you. I do. I hope the government steals from you. I uh, you know, but meanwhile, I'm going to claim more high sympathy. ground. I have no sympathy for people who advocate high taxes for them, their money to go to some corporation. Good. You advocate theft from other people, I'm glad you're stolen from. Maybe next time you won't. Yeah. Well, of course, they, you know, but they claim the moral high ground, too, in the argument, right? Well, at least I care. Oh, no, you don't. Right. Only, only, only they care. No one else but them cares. No one else they, cares. They're the only one who cares. Just right, of one. course. Only, only status care. I have no compassion. See, the That's reason right. I'm an anarchist is I, I'm a misanthrope, and I want everyone to starve and die. Absolutely. Right? I'm just I'm just making these videos to hide my true feelings. I'm just an evil prick, right? <laughs> I bleed ice water, <laughs> and I wear my little oh. baby seal slippers, and I love the way their big eyes look up at me every time I look down at them. As I eat my spotted owl burger, and yeah, yeah, I don't give a shit. Actually, spotted owl sounds good. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, 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 I'm, I don't care about animals, although I like them more than people. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I mean, so I mean, but I'm, I'm conflicted at the end of the day also because I don't think, I think there's a lot of arrogance in the liberty movement. I think that there is a lot, and I'm guilty of it too. I don't say that I'm, I'm not guilty of it, but I think there is a lot of arrogance of uh, among people like us as well, and I include myself, and sure I'll include you, uh, of, um, well, uh, I'm smarter than most people because I see through the bullshit and, you know, uh, there, there are libertarians who also have the condescending jackass, oh, anyone who disagrees with me must be a sheep and must be brainwashed. There's no rational reason they must have the view that they have, oh, I am the king of rationality. And I sort of get upset when other libertarians have that. Do you, do you find that is common among the liberty movement as well? I think there's, that, I don't know if it's really common. I think there are there are people who do it a lot, and they're the squeaky wheels, you know, and they're kind of trolly and whatever, you know. I mean, that's one way to go. I, don't, I I have to wonder how many people actually say, oh well, now that you've shamed me into a corner and made me feel so fucking small, I think I'll go to your side and you know and, and start considering the merits of your argument. I don't even think people are paying attention to the merits of their argument because they're too busy feeling like they just got shit on by somebody. I mean. I have, I mean, I'm not going to deny that, you know, that, that I am an I'm a very insensitive person when it comes to my arguments and when it comes to my, you know, the, my presentation, but I don't feel, I, I don't feel there's much to be arrogant about. I honestly don't. I think it's way too damn simple. I, I mean, I'm, I'm not a very, you know, I'm, I'm about as average as they come. I don't consider myself to be particularly smarter than the next guy. And that I would figure it out, and that I would get the, and I would get this, and that this resonates with me says something. You know, I mean, it says, okay, here's average Kelly Diamond, brought up in, you know, as the poster child of middle class, with two, you know, with a school teacher for a dad and an insurance agent for a mom. You know, I, you know, and I get, you know, and I come out of a public school system and a public, you know, even a public university, and I still come to this conclusion. I don't know. I, I don't think it's really that. I don't. I don't think it, it's it's a bunch of academia that gets me here, or you know, a, a profound amount of intelligence that makes you know, or some greatness that I have over other people. In fact, I don't think that way. I really feel that the people who who do ultimately come off really condescending are the ones that ultimately turn around with their ad hom and tell me, oh well, you can ha you can keep your utopia and you can you know you want your, your little utopian society and da, da 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 well and then they start throwing out all these government facts at me, facts such as they are you know and telling me that you know but for government X Y and Z and all that, it can get it can go both ways but I would say that if you if you get if you get too abrasive right and, and I and I know from experience you get too abrasive people start to say well. Nobody will like you for that. And it's like, well, at some point, at some point, I think it's incumbent upon a grown adult to consider the facts over the feelings. 
And if, if, if it's more important that the, that, the, that the argument be presented to you in a very sensitive fashion than it is for you to actually listen to the core of the argument, then the decoder is as responsible for letting liberty go as the encoder is for scaring them off. So I would say, and, you know, it's a matter of communicating how effective you want to be. Um, you get people who are really just, I mean, I mean, there are there are some where I've gotten into discussions with them, and I'm like, well, the good thing I came to anarchism on my own because if it, if the if the movement was relying on your evangelism to recruit people over to the other side, we'd all be fucked. <laughs> so right. you know, I mean, there are people I've met people like that, and I've, well, I've talked to people like that. And it's just like, wow, that's a little more hardcore than I can handle, you know. Um, but sure. Sometimes yeah. even I, I get called status by other anarchists sometimes because I maybe disagree with them on an issue or something. Not that I want government to advocate it, so I, I'm not really sure mm -hmm. I'm a status. But um, you know, I guess I disagree on some issues. Maybe I, I don't know. But yeah. But you know, but that, but the good news, I mean, what makes this so good is that there are so many stripes within the anarcho-capitalist movement that you will not find. In anarcho communism or you know or the, the anarchist left because they're more collectively oriented you know they feel they need to operate in unison and you know and come to a consensus on everything and vote on everything whereas you know you and I can see you and say okay well you can think X Y and Z I can think A B C and we can still peacefully coexist given those differences yeah. and I have no intention of trying to convert you and you have no intention of trying to convert me and we can have the discussion and walk away perfectly fine, shaking hands at the end. So there is no, you know, I mean, which is funny because when you look at how the anarcho left refers to anarcho capitalism, they refer to anarcho capitalists in the collective. You know, they, they refer to us as, you know, they refer to, you know, them as the anarcho capitalists. Why do anarcho capitalists do this? And why do all of them do that? They don't all do that. They don't all think that way. They don't all say the same thing, and they don't all make the same argument for it. They might have come to the same conclusion, but they probably had a different way of getting there. There is no, there is no, you know, collective in that regard. And and I would rather have that diversity than to have everybody singing the same song and beating the same drum to the same beat. You know? Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't think there is an anarchy left. I even, even among, I don't consider Noam Chomsky an anarchist. And I don't say that because I disagree with him, but to me an anarchist is someone who wants the government to not exist. So when I hear people like Noam Chomsky criticize Ron Paul for saying, we need a central bank, we need a Federal Reserve, you're not an anarchist. You're confused, <laughs> but you're not an anarchist. Once you say, don't, an anarchist is saying, I don't care what government's doing, cut it. Cut it. As yeah. government's doing it, cut it, I don't want government in my life, I, and it's just randomly with the saw chopping at the bit of the state. That so is an anarchist. A person okay. who says, no, we need, we need this government program, uh, how can you defend a central bank and say you're an anarchist? It, it makes no sense yeah. to me. Yeah, I guess from a Cloward and Piven perspective, you probably could be one and say, you know, if I can smash the state faster by, by becoming a greater burden on it, then I guess, you know, you could go there. I mean, even Bad Quaker did that. Had uh, at one point, he it was a short run, but he was uh, Ben Stone. He was saying something along the lines of, you know, do whatever you can to bring down the system, including taking from it, because that just makes it that much harder for it to work, you know, and it bloats it that much more, et cetera, et cetera. Tactically and in conversation, I guess, you know, but in terms of in terms of how, you know, in terms of actually walking the walk, I think, I think there's, a, there's more to it. And I think if you can, if you can avoid government, it makes more sense than deliberately thinking that by jumping on the bandwagon, you're, you're in part bringing down the state. You're, not in your lifetime. Not that way. Yeah, they're, just gonna increase, they're just going to increase more taxes and, and print more right. money. Than that. So, yeah. Right. I mean, the, but allow the government to collapse under its own hubris. It's it's plenty. You know, it's it's plenty heavy, and it's 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 a big enough burden to bring it down onto itself. What you don't need is, you know, people thinking that they're they're engaging in some heroic act by getting on welfare. 
<laughs> you know, I just don't, I just don't ascribe any sort of heroism to that. So, <laughs> I, I agree. When they're going to say, when how, when, when they're just going to say this is a double standard. You can accept these things, but we can't. So, right. Yeah, it's that. Well, anyway, uh, great having you on. We should do this uh, more often. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm usually around after work uh, around this time, so. Sounds good. Is that All right, cool. Take care. All right, take it easy. You too. Bye. Bye.